what is killing people and killing them by the million of starvation now is the effect of the global warming scare. Because many nations, including the United States, have taken up to a third of their agricultural land out from growing food for people who needed it to growing biofuels for clunkers that didn't. And that has meant in the last year or two a doubling, and I mean a doubling, of world food prices. And the World Bank says that, that nearly all of that doubling of world food prices is directly attributable to the biofuel scam, which in turn is directly caused by the global warming scare and government saying, well, even if it isn't true, we've got to take precautions. But you have to remember, you also have to take precautions to check that the precautions you're taking are not killing people by the million, which is what this policy of biofuels is actually doing. And by the way... All of this scare comes out from these idiots and these crooks and these criminals. And I, I'm very sorry I'm not kind of keeping my normal calm self here. No, please. I am so incandescent with fury that these people whom we as British taxpayers and you as American taxpayers have been paying to do this work and we have been trusting them to do it right. They have simply not only been making it up, but as you rightly say, they have been tampering with the peer review process, trying to interfere with reviewers to persuade them to pass or not to pass papers they didn't like. They've been trying to bully journal editors whom they don't like into resigning and getting the boards of the papers to appoint, uh, the, the learned journals to appoint somebody else more uh, agreeable to them. They've been interfering with the process of the UN's climate panel itself by saying in one case, here are two papers we don't like because they show that we're wrong. We will make sure that these papers do not ever get anywhere near the uh, UN climate report for 2007, even if we have to redefine the peer review process in order to do it. That's how far they've gone to bend the entire process of scientific research at every level, from the gathering of the data to the storage of the data to the processing of the data to making the data available to other people to writing up the data to doing the papers explaining what it means, calculating the temperatures, putting the papers in the peer-reviewed journals, trying to interfere with the peer-reviewed journals, interfering with the process of the UN's climate panel itself. It is a conspiracy from top to bottom, run by extremely powerful scientists who had got away for decades with challenging anyone who dared to argue with them by saying, you're not a scientist, you don't know what you're talking about, we're not going to pay any attention to you. They've said that to me and about me time and again. They describe me in one of their emails as a charlatan. Well, I don't mind insults, but these people are charlatans themselves. Pot calls kettle black. These people deserve to be locked up and locked up for a very, very, very long time and never, ever again to be allowed to hold any position of public trust or be paid a single penny of taxpayers' money. Well, Lord Moncton, that's the point, is there's so much fraud as I sit here and research it, saying that polar bears couldn't swim when they're the greatest land swimmer and hunt on the ice flows, and their numbers have exploded. Fact, local news in Austin last night said the polar bears are all dying. Total fraud, lying with the hockey stick, Al Gore putting the graph together, knowing that carbon dioxide comes after warming, lying about that, and then saying all scientists agreed with them and pointing to their 2,500 pets when it was only three universities, as you pointed out, producing the fraud. The others just signed on to the fraud, believing it. Uh, then we have... Uh, them calling people climate deniers, saying people need to be locked up who disagree with them, clearly authoritarian. I mean, this is outrageous. And now the U.S. climate czar in the Washington Times says hacked emails don't change anything. And I've seen London Guardian articles where they're whining, talking about how you and others are persecuting the poor scientists when they're in the emails talking about how to persecute you. That's right. And I'm going to go on persecuting them, if that's the way they like to call it. I am going to go on because whether they like it or not, and they've done more than anyone to try to stop the world continuing to be free. Well, we've had people like James Hansen, you've just quoted him, saying that people like me should be placed on trial for high crimes against humanity. Hey, I'm not the person killing people by starvation worldwide because of mad policies based on bad science. That's what they're doing. 
and they have got to go on trial for high crimes against humanity because what they have been doing is they have been recklessly and deliberately making up science, falsifying science, then doing their best to use the cover of the Data Protection Act and um, government privilege to prevent people from other scientists from legitimately asking to get the data which they then said they would destroy rather than giving it out. It is at every level a howling outrage. How we deal with it, I think that there are going to have to be prosecutions on this side of the Atlantic, indictments on your side. People are going to have to go to jail and be put on trial, not only for fraud, but I think we're going to need to send some of them to the International Criminal Court for crimes against humanity because so many people are dying in the poorest countries as a direct result of the lunatic policies being pursued by half-witted governments peopled with scientifically illiterate and innumerate thickos who don't know any science, and therefore they have a kind of white coat syndrome. A scientist comes along and tells them something, and they simply believe it, particularly if it happens to suit their political predilection, which means on the whole it's much easier to persuade the left of the nonsense these people have been peddling than it is the right, who tend to be more sceptical of this kind of thing. But even, so, even on the right, like our government here and like um, Malcolm Newt Turner, Gingrich. the opposition in, in, the United States, in, in Australia, um, that they have been taking the side of the climate wreckers, these, these people who are making up the data. And instead of saying, right, now we can see, you know, the scales have been lifted from our eyes, we can see we have been deceived. And therefore, we are going to cancel the Copenhagen conference. We're not going to go. We're not going to have a Copenhagen treaty. They're all going to go anyway. It was literally two days after the, these emails exploded all over the web. Of course, they didn't really get into the mainstream media, which have been telling the other story and can't bear to admit they got it wrong. But the, the Internet has exploded with these emails. Two days after that, President Obama announces, oh, I'm going to Copenhagen. We've got to save the planet. What planet is he trying to save? It was saved 2,000 years ago, and it certainly doesn't need to be saved now by President Obama. Thank you very much. Yeah, these fraudsters go even further, billing Al Gore in Newsweek as the prophet, his plan for the earth. He's going to save us. When we come back, I want to get into the point you made about people dying. Anyone can Google and find mainstream university reports where if they make moderate carbon dioxide cuts in industry, one billion third world people will die in the next decade. That is a conservative estimate. And we have the Royal Commission on Population from the 40s uh, discussing this. We have... Uh, well,